Hello. Yes. Right, finally got it working. Hello everybody, my name is John Hicks. I'm um, one half of Hicks Design, a local uh, design company. And um, tonight I want to talk to you about CSS filters. This is a method by which you make sure that the browser you want to get the right CSS gets the right CSS. Now in the start, way back in the, I don't know, five years ago, um, <laughs> we, we didn't have much of a problem with this. We had three kind of major browsers. Um, and if you wanted to link to a style uh, sheet, uh, that's all you had to use, just a link tag. Um, things got a little bit more complicated once you got into um, IE5 and Netscape 6. And you started having CSS2 starting to be implemented, but IE4 and Netscape 4 didn't understand it. So, this lovely little import line here was a really simple way of making sure that these browsers didn't get any of that old CSS, and therefore couldn't get it wrong. So, um, unfortunately, this led to lots of weird hacks. Now, this is one of the weirdest ones, because IE5 for Mac uh, had a completely different rendering engine to IE5 on the Windows. Um, they had to be targeted in different ways, and, different, and this is one of the things. This weird um, backslash here in the comment, uh, Tantec Selic found that this would then cut out anything in here from IE5 Mac. So, <laughs> there are, there are, if you look on Wikipedia, there's a huge archive of these things. Fortunately, there are things that we don't tend to need to use much these days, like the box model hack. So, the current browser landscape is such that we have this nice little collection here of modern browsers that <laughs> all support pretty much the same kind of things. Um, we also have this little array of um, IEs at the top we have to support. Um, IE9 not out yet, but it's in beta, I think, and um, by the looks of it, it's going to be pretty awesome, um, by IE standards. And, um, <laughs> we've got, <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, I'm just going to carry on. Um, IE7 and 8 at the moment, we're currently looking for, and IE6. Now generally, I don't know what you find, but I don't need time to find that um, if a site works, it'll work in IE7, with a few extra CSS rules, generally works well in IE8, um, and hopefully well in IE9, but it's IE6 that gets it wrong. So what we want to do, really, if we're allowed to, is exclude it. Now, it depends very much on your audience. I'm going to use the example of my site, because IE6 is um, less than 1% in the browser statistics, so there's no point supporting it. So you could do this. You could use an IE conditional comment, and you can say, if IE6, apply a big load of IE6 fixes that you work late at night trying to work out how to make the bloody column <laughs> sit to the left and not to the right. Um, it's, uh, but then that would be, if, if we can exclude it, then ideally we do. And this is the magic one. And apologies if you already know about this. But this strange turd of a conditional comment is actually a very helpful thing. What this does, if greater than or equals IE7, um, and there's a strange extra little comment that I added, I don't quite understand how that works, um, but basically everything IE7 or above will read all that. IE6, IE5, anything underneath it will ignore all of that, so it won't see all your complicated CSS that you spent a long time working on. And what it will actually do um, is uh, modern browsers will be fine with that. They'll just ignore the conditional comment and just read the link tag. So hooray, we've got a way of starting with a good basis. We've got IE7. So here's the site in a modern browser. But we need to give IE6 something. So one suggestion could be this universal IE6 CSS that you can apply, which just gives it a very basic layout. Not, not by spending time worrying about how it looks, but it's something that the content's all there and you can still read it. Um, and if for IE7, we can attach some uh, CSS fixes using a conditional comment. Uh, Tenly tends to start off with things like this, which sorts out a lot of layout problems. Uh, and then IE7 works. But we can also use media queries to filter out um, smaller windows or mobile devices. Uh, this is my site currently in the Opera Mini emulator. 
which obviously shows there's a lot of work to do because it looks rubbish. <laughs> but at least you can do it. But you can also target iPhone as well, um, which I know you heard some teeth being sucked in there, but um, it's, it can be a good thing. And you can create the, the, the nice little star sheet for that. In particular, I found it useful in things like um, uh, accommodating the type of fonts that you get on the iPhone. You can also do it with the iPad, with this media query, and you can get nice iPad style sheets. And you can also target the new iPhone 4 with this hyper sexy retina display, um, which looks just the same, but you can still target it anyway. So all that code is available on this URL over here, pixelimacode.uk, speaking CSS hyphen filters, where you can copy all that code. Thank you very much.